So hello everyone and welcome to the 2023 Southeast Collaborative Online Conference. My name is Lauren Clossy and I will be your host for this session entitled Working Together, Statewide Library Job Fair, Changing How People Find Careers. This event is supported through funding from the Library Services and Technology Act through the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Please feel free to ask questions or make comments in the chat or interact with other attendees and with the speakers within the Whova app for this presentation. And now I'd like to introduce our presenters, Hilary Ritt, Ashley Wagers, and Lori Davis. Thank you for being with us. Hello, I'm Hilary Ritt, Workforce and Adult Services Consultant with the Kentucky Department for Libraries and Archives. And I'm pleased to be here today with my fellow library colleagues, Lori Davis and Ashley Wagers. You will hear more specific Details from Lori and Ashley about how their respective libraries participated in the collaborative initiative, in this collaborative initiative. And I'm going to talk more about uh, working at the state level to facilitate collaboration between workforce partners and public libraries throughout the state of Kentucky. Uh, next slide, please. So, um, KDLA's role, um, and I'm saying KDLA, but let me back up a second. Um, so Kentucky Department for Libraries and Archives is our state library, and I will refer to it uh, during the presentation as KDLA, but it does serve as our state library. Libraries that participate, uh, public libraries in the state uh, are independent from KDLA. Our role at KDLA is to provide support and consultation to those uh, public library staff members and library directors and trustees, but it is up to each library to um, decide and, and manage their day-to-day uh, -day functions and how, what, how and what, how they participate in um, any kind of initiatives and so forth. They are, those make those day-to-day -day decisions there at the local level. And so my position at KDLA is in the library development branch, and I provide support for adult services and outreach staff in public libraries across the state. We have 120 libraries throughout the state of Kentucky. Two, li two counties share a library, and then we have uh, one city library and one county library with, uh, in that county. So, um, just so tickled to be part of this initiative, and we'll learn talk more about that here in a moment. But I'd like to share the next slide, please, um, about our mission statement at KDLA. Our mission at KDLA is to support and promote access to library services and to ensure that documentation of government activities is created, preserved, and made available for public use. The emphasis is added there because that's really what this initiative um, and the role of the state library is to be about is supporting and promoting access to library services. Of course, KDLA does many other things, but this initiative was to promote libraries and how they can, can help connect folks with workforce and career development needs that exist in their community. How did this initiative get started and, and how did this collaboration really start happening? Well, back in February 2022, Lori Davis reached out to me and asked if it was possible if we could have a statewide job fair initiative, how we could connect libraries across the state during National Library Week to promote workforce development and connect people with their public library. ADLA and Lexington Public Library Administration were on board with this. So uh, National Library Week last year in 2022 was April 3rd through the 9th, and we worked very quickly to get folks on board. We at KDLA have listservs that we use to communicate and that library staff use to communicate with us. So invitations to participate were sent out to Kentucky's public library directors. In addition, uh, we promoted the, the theme Connect With Your Library with that. Uh, in mind, and libraries across the state, uh, just, we were able to participate however they would like. And we'll talk a little bit more about that on this next slide. As I mentioned, KDLA's role is one of uh, consultative and supportive. And so libraries were given the flexibility to participate in whatever way worked best for their library and for their community. They could offer any kind of combination or variation. Uh, they could have on-site job fairs take-home job fair kits, 
hybrid, which could include take home and on site job fairs. And some libraries even create their own kind of career development fair during the week. We had 25 libraries participate. Some, some libraries uh, had a teen job fair. We had one library that had an on site job fair, a, rep a resume preparation program the day before their on-site job fair, and then during the week they gave out job fair kits. We had one library due to COVID who offered classes during the week but didn't actually have an on-site job fair. So we left it very open to the libraries and that seemed to work very well. What support did we provide for libraries participating? Well, we worked initially to go on and create a, we, I called it like a clearinghouse of resources from our workforce partners, and we'll talk about those partners here in a moment, that would be a place that libraries who were, that were participating could go and get, download these documents, print them, include them in their job fair kits, make them available on tables at the, at the job fair if it was on site. And you'll just see that's a screenshot of the Google Drive folder, but it, there's several resources and, and more have been added since then. In addition to that, Google Drive folder, we also have created in that folder a job fair resource guide. And I've given you just a little screenshot of that as well. The job fair resource guide had articles about job fairs and take home job fair kits about career development related activities, contact information and links, website links to all of the workforce partners that participated. And then different ideas about things that you could do with a job fair, take home job fair kit. And when I say take home job fair kit, I mean, it could be anything to a folder that included handouts in it or swag. It could be a bag that had swag and more information in it that customers could take, or it could be a little box or another type of um, kit that you think of. So that was also very flexible. We publicized this event uh, primarily through a press release and then let the libraries publicize it themselves as well. A statewide press release was adapted from the American Library Association's National Library Week press statement. And we were able to receive quotes from our governor, Governor Andy Bashir, and uh, KDLA's commissioner, library commissioner. So that was um, really exciting to see. In addition, we hosted an information session meeting near about two weeks before the actual National Library Week and Job Fair event. And so we shared social media handles so that cross promotion could happen via the social media channels that folks wanted to use. But libraries also promoted very um, adeptly on their own social media accounts. And here's a map that represents the 2022 statewide job fair participants. Um, there's credit given at the end uh, for the person who created this, the marketing director at the Lexington Public Library, uh, Jonathan Francis. But I think it's just so neat to see that libraries across the state, this is our initial uh, launch of this and that libraries across the state responded to this uh, initiative. Going into this, we knew not only would we need to get the libraries obviously connected and informed, but we would need to uh, communicate very well with our state and local workforce partners to make sure that all parties were aware of the initiative. And so these are a list of our partners here. I'm going to talk more on the next few slides about, um, about each individual partner and how they participated, but I just we couldn't have done this without their support and involvement. The first one I want to highlight is our Kentucky Career Centers, and you you may know um, in your state they may be called the American Job Center in Kentucky. Um, they are called Kentucky Career Centers. It's the same though connected with the Department of Labor's uh, American Job Center, and we worked with the office under in within the Kentucky Career Center, the Office of Employer and Apprenticeship Services. They have workforce development consultants, and we worked very closely with them to get connected with the local career center staff members and uh, even the local workforce development board staff, which we also worked with. The 
the Kentucky T Educational Television. Uh, they are our PBS affiliate, and they were also a, a great partner. All these partners were great in, in assisting us with this effort. So KET agreed to offer test accounts or demo accounts for their proprietary courses. They have Fast Forward, which is a GED prep course, and Workplace Essential Skills. They also um, offered coloring books in English and Spanish to participating libraries. And KET staff participated in the information session that we hosted for libraries that were participating in this event to teach them how to use the demo accounts and access them and how to record those who had expressed interest in learning more about those two courses. Kentucky Virtual Library, that's a state consortium of libraries. They work with school, public, and academic libraries, and even have some medical libraries that they work with. But they have, um, they provide databases and so forth through, for, through the consortium. And they created a resource guide of those databases that, that libraries could use and include in the packet, including uh, information about Learning Express Library and ProQuest ProQuest Career and Technical Education Database. And then our workforce boards, local workforce uh, development boards. And uh, you may be very familiar with uh, WIOA, which is the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act that was signed into law on uh, July 22nd, 2014. And it's designed to help job seekers access employment and also to connect those employers with those seeking employment. And so the local workforce development board and our state uh, Kentucky Workforce Innovation Board partnered with us on this initiative. And just like we gave flexibility with the libraries on how they would want to participate, all the flexibility was given to our workforce partners as well, including the uh, local workforce development boards. And one of our workforce development boards decided to uh, they took the initiative to create job fair bags for every single public library in their region so that those libraries could distribute them to their customers. They um, did a phenomenal uh, job in, in doing that. I think I may have uh, skipped perhaps our uh, Kentucky Chamber of Commerce, um, but I do want to mention that they also provided uh, coloring books and uh, Kentucky Critical Jobs of the Week resources and made those available for free to uh, our participating libraries. And then I'd like to share now about Retain Kentucky, and they were uh, another partner of ours, and they provided <clears throat> resources to us. Uh, they are a federal program, funded program, and Retain stands for Retaining Employment and Talent After Injury Illness Network. And it's for folks who have been out of work due to an injury or an illness that is not work-related. And those folks want to go back to work. And so Retain Kentucky provided flyers and various amounts of swag. I was able to take some of that, um, those uh, cups and other resources that they provided to um, both a library conference, the Kentucky Public Library Association Conference, and share that, and then also to one of our local career centers and share that so it could be distributed to libraries in that area that we're participating. And I'm gonna turn it over to Ashley now. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Ashley Wagers. I am the director at Jackson County Public Library. I've served um, my community here in Jackson County as their director um, for about five years. Um, and that, that time has went by so quickly, um, but sometimes I still feel like I'm a newbie. And so um, I'm continually looking at our programs and our services to see um, if what we're doing is effectively changing the lives of our patrons. Um, and if you can't tell by my accent, um, Jackson County is located in the Appalachian Mountains of Kentucky, um, and our county is surrounded by the gorgeous Daniel Boone National Forest. Um, it's a land of great beauty, um, and we have about 13,000 people that live here that call it home. Um, and because of our location, we're about probably an hour or so from any type of large grocery um, chain store like a Walmart. 
Um, we do have lots of Dollar General stores that they seem to keep, keep popping up everywhere. Um, and it's also important to note that the closest museum or movie theater um, to, to our community is at least an hour. Most most of our residents, it would take two hours um, for them to get to a to a museum or a movie theater. Um, and so, because of our economic um, hardships, and just you know, some some of our patrons and our community members, they just have poor access to reliable transportation, um, and many of them don't venture out past our county limits. Um, I've said all this not to paint a picture of a poor community because the people um, in this community are rich in so many ways, and we live here because we love it here, um, and and our population is growing continually um, as people leave um, city life for what I like to call a haven in the hills. Um, I, I do want to paint a picture of how important it is for our library to be a bridge to the possibilities um, that are out there for our community patrons. So when I heard about Lori and Hillary at KDLA organizing this statewide fair, um, job fair, I jumped at the opportunity to utilize um, our National Library Week um, to aid our community's goals um, in connecting people with careers. Um, you can go to the next slide. Um, so um, just right before this job fair, uh, initiative started, um, our community had completed what's called a work ready application um, with the Kentucky Cabinet of Economic Development. Um, and we qualified for what's called an in progress status. So, um, and if you're not familiar with that, um, what that meant is that we were close, but just not quite there to meeting the criteria as being labeled work ready. When you meet a work ready criteria, the community is said to be ready to work. And so what that means is that that our community would be labeled ready to work or work ready um, so that um, it, it would say that we have qualified employees living here in this community that are ready to work. And it's important for small towns like ours um, to, to, to be able to have this type of status because it attracts larger companies to our area. Um, to bring jobs to our area. And so this statewide job fair partnership, it correlated right with the goals that our community had already set to become work ready by increasing the awareness of job opportunities and education opportunities in our towns. Um, so taking into consideration the theme that we had for that week um, and our community's plans to become work ready, we focused on three goals um, in creating programs to celebrate for this um, statewide uh, job fair. Um, and those, the first goal was that we wanted to provide our community um, with resources that were available in our community that could help them find a job um, or reach education goals that would make it possible for them to get a job. Um, and we also wanted to showcase careers that were available inside our small community. Um, in small towns, sometimes the general perspective is that you either work at the local gas station or you become a teacher. But the actual situation um, being is that we have career options here, um, but sometimes those vacancies are filled with people who live outside our community. So we wanted to highlight local people that had jobs in various career pathways inside our community. Um, and our third goal was to be able to provide these resources um, and showcase these careers by connecting our library with our patrons through in-person and virtual programming or platforms. Next slide. Um, when we started the planning phase, um, when you're a small library and you're working with a small budget, um, the first part of that planning is to utilize all the resources that you know you have, especially those that that offer their services and their resources for free. So that first step of planning this program had already been taken care of by partnering with the state, with doing it statewide. Um, and um, so with the programming budget that's small, we have to we have to you know look at things to try to get the most bang for our buck so that we can have huge impacts in our community by combining our efforts with other agencies. Um, so the statewide initiative um, 
for holding the job fair during library week in Kentucky, we used all those resources that were put out by the workforce development through KBLA um, that Hillary spoke about earlier. Um, and so the next step would be for us to reach out to our local community collaborators um, to see if they wanted to join and contribute anything to our job fair that we were planning for that week. Um, the educational and development agencies in our areas are usually always willing to help us promote education and employment opportunities because that also aligns with the, what their missions are and what their goals are. So when we spoke with our partners, um, they said, we've got all kinds of information. We've got, we've got little stuff that we've, we have here at the office. We'll, we'll bring it down. We'll drop it off. So we, the donations just started coming in to add to these um, job fair kits that KDLA had already sent us resources to start to prepare. So the third thing that we did was we, we built our career bags um, and we put them all in backpacks. Um, we didn't even have to buy the backpacks. They were donated by uh, the adult education center that we have here. It's called Boosles. Um, and so we made the, the take home job fair bags um, and they didn't cost us anything except what the paper was for us to print some of the information on. Um, the next step that we that we looked at was to um, to showcase the careers to, to meet that goal. So we started writing down all the careers that could be found um, around us and we began to make phone calls. So we scheduled interviews. And then we compiled, compiled a list of basic uh, questions to ask the interviewer. Um, questions like, um, what does your day look like, uh, you know, in your field? Um, what education or training do you want? Just basic, simple. I think each video was about five minutes long and had about five or six questions that we asked our interviewers. Um, that would just give a simple introduction to that career pathway. Um, and then after we did the interviews, we we conduct we put those together on, on on little short clips we used iMovie it's an easy um, to use free app that you can download to your iPhone and you can use that iPhone to edit your video to use the videos that you took from your iPhone so it's very easy to implement you don't have to like have a tech degree to make these videos so it was very easy very cost effective it didn't cost us anything um, and then we uploaded the interviews to our YouTube channel and we created a schedule for them to be released do it during our job fair to fulfill that virtual component that we wanted to add um, to this job fair. Um, as we went through the possible careers, one thing that we did, we did have to limit ourselves because when, you st when we started looking out in our community at what people did in our community, the list was huge. So we, we ended up with doing 11 interviews um, that were on 10 different career pathways. Um, and so this year we will be doing we will be doing that again with different people um, and adding more career pathways. Next slide. So here is a picture of our um, book display that we put up during our job fair week. Um, people love freebies. Um, anytime you say you've got something free to give away, people will come. Um, it had office supplies in it, it had pens, it had notebooks, and then it had all that stuff that the KDLA had for us to print, informational flyers and stuff like that. And then we had the little backpacks on the floor or what was donated by our local um, adult education center. Um, so we, we gave out about 50 of these take home job fair bags with all the freebies in it. Um, and I'm excited this year um, because this picture reminded me, we just recently done a renovation. And so this picture was taken last year and we just finished our renovation. So I can't wait to do a big, nice new display this year for our job fair with our new um, display cases and desks that we have here. Um, these kits were a huge hit. Um, we also did a book display that highlighted some of our books from our nonfiction collection. Um, which resulted in a heavy weed and a restock. Sometimes I love to do program themed book displays whenever we have programs that we can do that for because it kind of illuminate um, gaps in your collection um, that you didn't realize that you had there. So uh, when possible, I always try to have literature and books to go with what we're what we're doing that week. Um, next slide. Here is the little snapshots from the interviews that we did. Um, 
this was probably, this was my favorite part of our job fair. Um, I love to go outside the walls of our library and connect with our community. Um, and so when we were choosing who to interview, it was kind of surprising how many people did not want to be on a video recording. Um, so you will run into that if you choose to do these interviews, but we really thought that this was the best method um, to, to do this so that people could actually see and connect um, and kind of see how diverse in age, um, gender, and education um, that our workforce was in Jackson County. Um, some of the careers that we highlighted was um, there was a bank teller who worked at a local bank. Um, we uh, interviewed the CEO of a telephone company, uh, PRTC, um, that services several counties in eastern Kentucky and, and, were actually, and is actually known worldwide for providing the best broadband in Kentucky. Um, we interviewed a uh, young man who was a commercial and residential builder. Um, he, he just seemed younger than he should be to have that kind of success. Um, but we interviewed him. We interviewed um, a, a lineman who worked for our electric provider, a teacher and a school librarian at our, pub, at our local public school. Um, we also interviewed a nail technician um, who operated her own salon here in our community. Um, a graphic designer who produces our local newspaper, um, a, a nurse practitioner who, oper who opened and operates her own clinic um, through Advent Health here in uh, McKee, Kentucky, where our library is located, um, and a veterinarian who opened up her own animal clinic in her hometown. Um, so all of our participants were native to our county and they chose to work in their communities in their set skills. So we wanted to highlight that. Um, and so we, we scheduled these videos to air daily, the week of um, library week, about two videos a day. Um, and we got a lot of great feedback from these videos. Um, and one of the, one of my favorite feedbacks was um, uh, one of our high school teachers that was in the career and consumer field. Um, she used these interviews as part of her instruction. Um, so next slide. And that was really fun. Um, Children at JCPL, Jackson County Public Library, are very, very important and seen as the future success of our community here. So whenever we do any kind of theme or promo, we always try to incorporate something for our elementary age uh, patrons. So we asked a local firefighter um, to come and speak with our, we call it our lily pad, our children's group. Um, and Shelby, you can see her picture here. She she uh, was born here, um, went to our high school here, graduated here, um, and she served as a volunteer firefighter here in Jackson County. Um, we have a volunteer fire department. Um, but she, one thing to note about Shelby is that she works in Berea. She, um, Berea is a neighboring town and she was the first female firefighter to be hired and so we just felt like that was an awesome way to highlight Shelby and her success and an easy way to showcase a career pathway that also encourages people to think outside the box when they think about possible careers that they might have um, here in Jackson County. Um, next slide. Um, so this was the first time that our library had ever actually hosted a job fair. We have had like we, ha we have a, a career development center and stuff that have come in and done their own little uh, job fair workshops, but this was the first one that we had actually hosted ourselves. So we we didn't go huge with it. We did it very small. It was very inex very inexpensive. I mean, less than a hundred dollars. I mean, we had to buy the little hats for the the children's program, um, but and and some food. But that that was basically all that it costed us by the time that we just used all of our local resources and what KDLA had shared with us. Um, but it had a huge, huge impact. Um, over my last five years here as director, we've done several different themed weeks and programs. And occasionally we will we will choose to repeat one if we see that it's being success, successful. Um, and this job fair was one of those programs. Um, so we'll be continuing to do this type of program every year. And I hope that um, actually my staff have already been planning new things. So what we're going to add to our um, job fair this year um, is we're going to kickstart a new series of programs called Adulting 101, um, Things That You Should Know. Um, and the first walk workshop is going to start um, during our job fair this week or during library 
we um, and it will cover resu resume writing and interview skills and then we're going to follow with monthly classes that's just going to cover basic consumer skills such as opening a bank account um, or creating a budget just you know stuff that that you need to do as an adult um, and so I really hope that other libraries will replicate what we've done here in Kentucky because it was very successful um, you know to offer a job fair program and then to do it together I mean it's important to work together on programs especially when they target topics such as career development that is that relates to all of us that relates to all of our goals and missions um, I know that when groups collaborate more work can be done and so with that I'm going to pass the mic on to Lori Davis she's the workforce development manager um, at Lexington Public Library I'm also in Kentucky um, she facilitated this job fair in a much larger library. Uh, she's got six branches in Lexington. Um, although she's only located about an hour past what we call the Big Hill here in Jackson County. And she'll be sharing her experience and some expertise with us. Thank you, Lori. Hi, I'm Lori Davis with the Lexington, Kentucky Public Library, and I'm very pleased to join you today, as well as my colleagues whom you've heard already, and talk a little bit about a workforce initiative that we have done over the last year and are continuing to do now. So we are doing a statewide job fair, and the title of our presentation is Changing How People Find Careers. Next slide, please. I am transmitting to you from the Lexington, Kentucky Public Library. Yes, we are part of the South, and I'm very pleased to show you a picture of where we are in Lexington. It is the second largest city in Kentucky, and that is our central library building. And I am here today from the fifth floor, which I like to refer to as the penthouse. And pleased to talk to you a little bit about what I do and also how I've connected with both Hillary and Ashley in terms of our statewide job fair initiative. Next slide. So a little bit about us. We are the urban library. We have another urban sized library here. It is the Louisville Free Public Library. And they are about an hour and a half or so away from Lexington. Lexington is horse country. And we do a lot of things with horses and as you might imagine, bourbon as well. And so a little bit about Lexington and our public library. We were established in 1795 and we are the oldest library west of the Allegheny Mountains. As I said before, we are the second largest public library system in Kentucky, serving over 325,000 people in our urban government population area. We have a central library, and we also have five branch libraries throughout the city of Lexington. And of course, we have, just as you all do in North Carolina, we have a virtual library that is open 24 seven. Next page. So here at the library, when we are considering putting together programming that impacts our community, we have the vision that we are a community engaged in a lifetime of discovery from birth all of the way to the seniors. And we are providing services that we think are appropriate to help everyone across our city and our county. And our mission has been to connect people, inspire ideas and transform lives. And the transformation of lives is really where I come in with the workforce development programming that we do. And workforce in our estimation runs from adult education to career preparation, and sometimes for some folks, entrepreneurship. You can see a picture of one of the vans that we have with the Kentucky Higher Education Assistance Authority doing a college fair at that point. If you'll, next slide, please. And so during the pandemic, we thought 
we have got to, just as everyone else, need to pivot and figure out a different way to provide services to Lexingtonians. And our executive director was on the forefront and she hit the ground running with everyone else here at the library to find novel approaches. And for example, what we did in the Library for Workforce Development, next slide please, is a take home job fair. And I will give you many more details about the take home job fair that we did during the pandemic. And now we continue to do because of its popularity. One of the things I wanted to do with outreach was to connect with our state workforce librarian, Hillary, who you already have met, and talk to her about ways that we could partner from our location and with state government in Frankfort, Kentucky, which is our state capital, and our other public library friends and colleagues. One of the things that I thought we should do is really look at workforce development from the lens of the individual. And that guides my work here at the Lexington Public Library. And Lynn Harrelson, she provided a talk on what is workforce development. At the time she was with the Federal Reserve Bank in St. Louis, and she really talked about workforce development from an individualistic idea and talked about how important it is. And you can see her quote on the slides about how workforce development includes a range of activities, policies, and programs that we in different areas of the community use to create, sustain, and retain a viable workforce. And we're really proud of some of the accomplishments that we have done across the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And a lot of what she has written really resonated with me. Next slide, please. So the individualized approach is something that Ms. Harrelson had talked about so very thoughtfully and convincingly to me. And basically looking at supporting the workforce first from an individual lens and talking about how important it is to sustain our communities by making sure we touch individuals where they are then. And I thought this approach would be one that we should really take a look at when developing a statewide initiative. So Hillary and I connected, talked a lot about what we really thought we could do to impact our communities. And so you have learned earlier that during the National Library Week of 2022, we connected with public libraries and a couple of academic and school libraries to really do something during that week to uplift the individuals in our communities. Next slide. And again, I was focused on the individualized way and lens of handling workforce development. And when you do it from an each individual, that's how you are able to build and retain employees and communities. Next slide. So when looking at workforce development as an individualized approach, you also have to think about what other impacts there are to an individual. And so that's why Hillary and I discussed the need for including community partners in our initiative and healthcare individuals and healthcare entities. We had Retain Kentucky who came in and supported us by showing us how they could reach out to individuals and help them if they had a health related desire or need to get back into the workforce, but there was a healthcare barrier, maybe an injury or an illness that they needed specialized support for. And we also worked with our local and state chambers of commerce, our um, academic institutions. And so the need for social supports was very clear. And so that's why we included their participation 
in the statewide job fair week. Next slide, please. As you know, as library staff and colleagues and economic development partners, you know that libraries have been engaged in workforce development probably at their inception. We as libraries, we are trusted resources here in the communities that we live in. People come to us with their concerns, their issues, and they expect for us as librarians to give them no nonsense truth to their needs. And so one of the slides that you see here is from our partner, Grow with Google, and they have indicated that 73% of libraries across the, the country really do help with job searching and career preparation. And then approximately 48% are working in tandem with entrepreneurship entities and also entrepreneurs in their communities. Next slide. So we are here at the Lexington Public Library really focused on job retraining, helping job assistants, search assistants through our book a librarian idea and processes. We also have drop-in times when individuals can come to any of our locations and get the support that they need with maybe an application or a resume. And we continue doing those things during the statewide job fair, even though it was not our marquee event that week, but it is something that we continue to do because there is a need in our community for it. We are also helping as much as we can to upskill and reskill citizens in our area here in Lexington. And for those who are desirous of moving towards entrepreneurship in a part-time way or full-time, we offer entrepreneurship support and assistance. Next slide. So speaking of our statewide job fair marquee event, we did a take home job fair. At each of our six physical locations, we provided each of these locations bags of information about employers who were hiring right then in our communities. No matter what the particular industry or field, we were looking for good jobs. And by saying good jobs, we're defining that as at least paying $15 an hour and above, including traditional benefits. We feel as though those are the types of jobs that are really going to help individuals move out of poverty and to more safe and sustainable communities and environments. And so our take-home job fair, we had 500 of these purple bags available and individuals through, and of course it was still a little shut down um, in our community, but individuals could come in and take from a kiosk one or more for their family or friends of these take home bags. We had 500 in them, but we not only included job information, but we also included the social supports that we know that some individuals need and to help them get to where they were able to start thinking about working at a job. And so we gave away 500 uh, during the statewide job fair and National Library Week in April, the first week of April. And we, as you can tell, we have a slide of a picture of one of the social media posts that we made and it just took off like wildfire. And we have continued to do the take home job fairs quarterly. However, we have moved to more of a sector based approach. So we have done healthcare, we have done advanced manufacturing, we've done IT and business, for example. And the take home job fair was a model that we thought 
would be low key for our customers and patrons to come in to really benefit from. And of course, we have the printers and we have the laptops and the standalone uh, computers as well as fax copying so that they could, if they felt so inclined to go ahead and apply for those positions of interest right there in our library. And if they ran into any stumbling blocks, the library staff would be there to assist them. Next slide. So job and career help is really what we do here on a day-to-day -day basis. And we do those through book a librarian, and we also do those by other walk-in type visits, as well as specified drop-in hours. And we really find that that is very helpful. Some individuals have some reluctance in talking about some of their previous job history or barriers. And we try to make it a safe space so that they can share with us really where they want their next career to go. And the statewide job fair is something that we really have believed in. We've had a lot of good feedback from what we did with the take home job fairs. We have people who will come after the statewide job fair events uh, was were over and ask us when we were gonna do it again. And we let them know that it was going to continue to be quarterly. And we have ever since had really good interest about, and I believe we have one coming up in April. In fact, we do um, again, but we're going to do a little something different for 2023's National Library Week. Next slide, please. So for the 2023 National Library Week and Statewide Job Fair Week, we in Kentucky here at the Lexington Public Library are partnering with our friends with the Lexington Fayette County Urban County Government, as well as Goodwill Industries of Kentucky, and a couple of other partners to provide an expungement clinic, as well as a job fair. We do it here in Lexington at uh, a place that you may have heard of that is familiar to you basketball fans at Rupp Arena. We do it in a conference room. It's very large and we invite our entire community to come to the job fair and the expungement clinic. You can come and do one or both or however you would like. Sometimes people come to just pick up job fair information. Sometimes people come and pick up um, information about how to pursue an expungement. We have attorneys who are available to answer questions about expungement and help start the process for those individuals. You can see in the slide that there is a photograph of a few of us, including the Lexington mayor, as they are the presenting sponsor of the event. We did it in April of last year, but we're looking to do it bigger and better and have it to be our marquee event for statewide job fair and library week. And so we're really excited about how many people we served last year, and we're extraordinarily pleased about the interest, and we're looking to serve at least 500 individuals in that event. And so we won't have the opportunity to watch the video right now, but I certainly hope that you take a look at it as a model for what you might be able to do in your communities. We would be extraordinarily satisfied if your city or state participated in a large expungement clinic and job fair event across your city or your state. So please do take a look at the clip in your resources. Next slide. We have enjoyed the opportunity to collaborate with Hillary at the state level, 
also with our colleague Ashley. You could see previously that she's from a rural library and some of the impact that she's had in her area, but also from what we have been able to do as a larger urban library. We are all working together and it's my hope and I believe Hillary's vision that we as a state library system can work more cohesively together to really uplift our community and our Commonwealth. I thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to talk with you today. I hope that you have found our presentation one of value. And if you have any questions, all of our contact information will be included in the resources. And I am happy, and I'm sure Hillary and Ashley are as well, to chat with you anytime. And we hope that this is replicated across the country and what strengthens Kentucky can strengthen your state, your individual communities as well. I thank you very much again, and I hope you have a very good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lori. I have it's been a delight to work with both Lori and Ashley and all the libraries that participated in the statewide job fair. It was incredible to see the creativity that came from the libraries that participated, the different ways that they, what they did. And so I just wanna let you know a few things that we learned from, from this experience. So we actually sent surveys out using the SurveyMonkey, um, using, using SurveyMonkey, that was our survey tool. And out of the 25 libraries that participated, 14 responded. And then it's hard to gauge how, quite how many workforce partners participated. We had so many with the local workforce board staff, each Kentucky Career Center staff, and the other different workforce partners that we had. But we had seven of those participate and respond to the survey too. And generally the feedback was very positive. Um, we, we heard um, from, from some folks uh, from the library staff that we used our Facebook account to get the word out and it was great. Another quote was, having kits ready to be picked up and having a broad range of information to provide, that was helpful. The workforce partners said, got the information out in a local area, was customer friendly, didn't require a lot of time or effort from us or the libraries. And then last comment from the workforce partners, we did a bag of job event with over 100 customers participating. It was easy to do for both sides. I can see this as an annual event. So we also learned that it, for, for us uh, as the libraries and for the workforce partners that we need to start early for publicity and pu preparation. So we started even publicizing this almost, I think in June or um, July of last year, just letting them know that when National Library Week was gonna be and keeping up with uh, the conversation with the workforce partners, developing that relationship, continuing that relationship, uh, that is critical for um, going forward and um, it's a continual process. And then we also learned uh, that it's great to let both the workforce partners and the libraries to be flexible and allowing them to participate in the best way that works, excuse me, works best for them. Looking ahead to 2023, Ashley just shared what she's uh, be doing. And so we are able to partner with our adult education staff at the state level. They have created some flyers for us and um, we may be able to do some additional publicity with them or promotion with them. Kentucky uh, legislature passed last year a House Bill 4 and that became active or uh, and became law uh, January 1st this year. That affects those who are applying for unemployment insurance. And so um, there, there are more requirements, including having to uh, participate in job fairs or um, classes related to workforce development. And so that puts libraries in a great position to be helping those in the community who are trying to um, receive those benefits. But then also the goal of course is to get them to a, to a job. And that's providing support also for Kentucky Career Center staff who may not be able to provide those, um, their hours may be a little different uh, than our library's hours. So can provide more coverage for those who are seeking assistance. And then this is a great thing. We have had three school libraries decide to participate this year. So they're working with the high, 
high school students and getting them connected with uh, careers. One of them, I believe, is doing a summer job fair with their students uh, during National Library Week. So thank you so very much, and I'm just delighted to get to partner again with Ashley and Lori in this initiative. So thank you so much, Hillary and Ashley and Lori for sharing with us today. And thank you to everyone who attended the webinar as well. If you have questions for the presenters, please feel free to reach out to um, the speakers in the Whova app. Um, and an evaluation is provided with the conference session resources and we welcome your feedback about this session and about the conference. So thanks everyone for making the 2023 Southeast Collaborative Online Conference successful this year, and we hope to see you all next year.